Why did you have to test before? No, no, no. no. What's your name, sir? Demer, D W M E R. Mm -hmm. You were cold? We were on a plane from London that something was wrong and sun was starting to change temperature like every 10 minutes. I just had a little bit of silence, you know? But mm, no cold. Your first name was Roman, right? Right. You yeah. know? Right on. to avoid the press, you know, getting on the Are you still buying it? Are you back working on movie now? Well, I'm trying to put myself together. Well, it's, I don't know what it's 
Associated with the uh, army, Polish army, do you know? Not at all. You know, he tells several, several people this. Yeah. And uh, I was wondering if there's any truth to it as far as uh, your knowledge. Your as far as my knowledge? Not at all. He went to the university first, uh, studying. Uh, uh, chemistry, if I'm, not, if I'm not mistaken, before we met each other, which is a long way back. And in Poland, when you study, you don't go to the army, you have one day military preparation, and each year, or I think after two years, you have a kind of a three months camp, and you come out as an officer, you know, like so I assume, he, I assume he did it, then he went to the film school, but it was after he left Poland already, so he must have gone, if he already was an officer, that I didn't have to go through this stuff, but I tell you another thing, this guy, um, Vitold, 
I said, I didn't, I didn't know that. That he is uh, sort of uh, uh, adopted son, not really a son, but he's, I think, cousin of, he's a son of cousin of our sister of a guy whose name is Klishko, who is one of the most important uh, personalities in, in, in the Polish uh, government. Klishko. 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 You know, I just learned it when I was in New York on the way back to London. And uh, to my surprise, I didn't know about it. You know, it's, it's, a, it's like a... I mean, it was really a very high, uh, the next man to Gomulka, you know? Oh. And this... High up government. High up government, and very much against Gomulka, you know? One of these sons of bitches that start with this, you know, anti-Semitic... Uh, Kunt, I think. Uh, was uh, Vito in the service in the army? I, I, d I never met him before. before. Oh, you never met him? No, I didn't know the man. I didn't know often. Only thing... Uh, I know once I received, I don't know if it was said from here or from Paris, uh, you know, um, a sort of pamphlet of his pictures, you know, we told K. I I didn't like him too much, so I didn't even really get interested. I never heard of the man until... Uh, Have you seen any of his paintings? Yes. Does he have any talent at all? I think he does. I think he does. Uh, yeah, he does have talent. Dance of talents, nothing uh, to uh, faint, you know. <laughs> no, 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 you know, nothing to jump, nothing to. And it's not bad. He's got talent. He's not a fake, you know. But he is definitely a. You know, I learned more things now, you know, when I was in Europe, for example. That he's a very heavy drunker. People. Yes, at least he used to be. I was a real boozer, you know. Uh, by the way, when I asked him to make this paint, painting of the guy, of this, uh, the one that, that came uh, yeah, first, <coughs> right? Uh, he first got drunk, he said, like, let me get drunk, and I like, do it. But he is very heavy drunk, right? he's, uh, he's a liar. Apparently, he was, uh, uh, you know, troublemaker. I mean, he was the kind of guy with fights, etc. Yeah, someone told me he was pretty strong and fairly. Yeah, yeah but I didn't know that. But you see, uh, when I was in pa uh, in in London, now a friend from Paris came, a, a dear friend of mine. She's a lady of about forty-five or so, and she knew him when he uh, during his pe uh, Parisian period a little bit. Disliked him really much. And uh, she knew Wojtek quite well during that time. And the third character they sort of hung together was Maria Klasko, a very talented Polish writer, but also a drunkard and sort of fighter. And he just died recently in Germany, uh, very strangely, you know, apparently overdose of sleeping pills. He went to Germany from Hollywood to make because there was a, the, the German television was doing a play from his book. The first day he arrived, he had a dinner with, uh, with uh, uh, the producer, went to the hotel and died. They walked, uh, they broke into the room next noon or something like that. It was a very strange thing. My composer, and a dear friend who made all films for my, all the music for my films. I brought him here to make a film for Ros uh, music for Rosemary's Baby. His name was Cometa. He walked, he got drunk with this man, this writer, Mara Klasko. No, with Mara Klasko. People was unknown to us. He wasn't even here. And fell on the street, had a world came to the studio and was like, and they were drunk, you know. And I said, Jesus, what happened? He said, oh, my head. He went to the doctor. And uh, then, he, like, three months later, he made another music for Paramount, for another picture. Three, two months later, he started feeling very bad. And 
We were going to go skiing to Europe. I was living with Sharon, with him. And he said, I can I have this? No one is there. It was the, the epitome, you remember? It was uh, last year, uh, but uh, right. yeah. Just before the Christmas. Very bad then. Right. I sent him the doctor. I say, I'm leaving. Then you better you come over to join us. And a few days later, I had a telephone that he's a, a, a bl blood in his brain. How do you call it? Blood clot. Blood clot. Mm -hmm. put him on the operation table. He never regained consciousness. Three months later, he died. Mm -hmm. There was this Mary class who was the first uh, for me, and that was the beginning of this year. You know, it was the first really tremendous shock to me because he was, I mean, I made all things for me, a lot of my success, his contribution, etc. Okay. Coming back to this guy, Clasco, who died so mysteriously. I talked about this, all these things, uh, with this friend of mine, this lady, who knew them. And he, she told me one very funny thing. She said, once Marek came to me, Marek was really, he was, uh, whenever he was driving, he was a trouble, always beating me. And he said uh, that he had fight with Kachanowski, with Kay, with Vital Kay. And uh, that he, you know, he beat him up. And she repeated it to Wojtek. And what is that? They seem full of shit. I mean, Kachanowski would strike him once and he would be flat on the ground. You know, I just then, no. And considering he's, uh, he's rather slim mm -hmm. and doesn't look dangerous, you know. And uh, Mary Vlasco was a real, you know, troublemaker. Mm -hmm. And made me think entirely different in different things of the guy. Uh, in terms of the guy. I didn't call him yet. I'm going to call him and talk to him a lot, etc. And I, I see really what, what is behind. It's very strange, you know, his behavior. You know, I'm quite used to certain patterns of human behavior because that's what I'm dealing with in my, in my profession. No, I was in such shock that I couldn't evaluate things properly, but now I can. And uh, there's something, there's something weird about him, definitely. Well, was it common practice for, mm -hmm. since you're uh, successful in your field and uh, probably have more money than most of these people who come in as uh, we can't call them refugees, but at least uh, immigrants, or uh, well, let's say the Polish uh, that would come down from Canada on the visa. Is it common practice for them to seek you out uh, assistance or something? A lot of people are trying, but I was avoiding. I, uh, it, you know, now I read and I heard that I was sort of a Polish uh, a center, which is not true, because I, I was I was resenting them for a couple of reasons. First, that they have tremendous chip on their shoulders, which brings me down. Second, that it, it associated with me for years in Poland, which were not so good for me. But Wojtek Frankowski was an old uh, friend of mine. I resented very often his uh, sort of, how can I express it? He's, he was a total loser, you know, whatever he started, he would fuck it up, you know, mm -hmm. and he would get trying to make some trouble, he would, you know, and, but when he was in Paris, when he, when he defected, he, he was always writing me letters, you know, were, he really loved me, you know, because I got him out of this um, film school, you know, and things like that, and he was sort of full, I was the model of him for, you know, what he would like to achieve. When I was in Paris, I gave him some money. But I was trying to stay away from him and his Mary Clasco, you know, because I didn't like this type of thing. Then in New York, when he was, I saw him change very much. He, he didn't drink, he really felt he was going to do something. He was full of good spirit. I passed him some money, etc. And uh, he met Gibby Folger and I thought that's good for him, you know, rich girl, that's exactly what he needs. And when he came here, I was trying to help him with a job, to find a job. And recently, when, since I was preparing this film, I called him, because I saw that he was getting a little bit uptight, doing nothing. He's, he's next to this girl, you know, like a pimp. I said, believe me, you, you, uh, you have a job on myself. 
And I have a few letters that I just found now in London, you know, from him. You know, full of enthusiasm, you know. He's reading all books about dolphins because it's that was the subject. And, and his, his ideas, and he, he, he can't wait. And he, and he really, he really loved me that, that you know. That's you don't think he resented your success when he said anything? No, that's no. absolutely in, in, an insinuation of, you know, ill willing people. Uh, Canada, I don't know nobody from Canada except Eva, Eva who came from Canada. I met her in Paris. I met her in Poland when she was a little girl, I mean, 14 years old, going around, we used to call her Lolita, you know. She came over here from Canada and she had terrible trouble, you know, staying in London, etc. And I and she didn't know where to stay, so I told Sharon, here's this girl, you know. She was Sharon was such a lovely person, she wouldn't resent, you know, with another girl staying in that house. We gave her a back, back room, she, she stayed maybe, I don't know, two or three weeks, or maybe longer. And I said, if I were going to do something, I'd move. And she moved, and then she, she was staying with Vojtek. Once, Shortly before I left, I remember that she called me, she came crying, she said that she can't stand anymore, then he put her down, and he said he put for nothing, you'll never do anything, you, you're full of shit, and you, you, what are you doing, you better do something. I said, then she came to see me in my office, I said, listen, Eva, you know, don't worry, etc. I sent her to my lawyer, I said, maybe he will help you with your... Uh, because I don't remember if it has a stay permit or work permit was uh, expiring. And I left, and that's it. And then when I came back and talked to her, she was very good to me, you know, during the period. She said everything was going so well and everything was nice. Ah, also she met, through me, she met Jay and all these people, and Wojtek. Also, there were only two pe two Polish persons that I had any contact with. Although there were other who were coming, like there was this comedian, you know, this, this guy that I made called the Dad, a friend of mine, this uh, composer, had a, had a friend whose name is Abratowski, another composer, who was a complete wreck, complete. You know, I mean, you couldn't get a job, couldn't, I mean, could, you were wreck, really. And he went through some traumatic experience in Poland. Poland, he had a car crash, his uh, wife died, he's around 40 with glasses, rather fattish. You know. I said, well, I don't know how I can help you. I'll, uh, maybe, uh, I know some people in, in pop music, he's very good at or organ player. I introduced him to uh, John Phillips. John Phillips uh, listened to him once, you know, auditioned him and said he will use him for some little things. And then the guy was in, the, in terrible trouble. Told me he was working in a, in a packaging potatoes, you know, like in, at night. So I said, oh, shit, I pass you some money, I give him some money. Then Comida, a friend of mine, you know, the composer mm -hmm. told me I gave him some money too, but how long can we give him money? And and I told him I gave him about a thousand dollars to him there. He said, oh, the moment I start swimming up to you, I don't forget. I will never forget. So I will never, I never forget. He came to the house, you know, and I gave him this money. And Sharon went down the stairs and he kissed her on her hands. And I said, yeah, I feel good for top of the And then he left. I didn't hear from that guy until uh, about three weeks ago, I got a letter from him from Las Vegas. I guess he probably got a job there. He says, I'm sorry, I am, etc. That's all I contact with Polish people. Although many of them called me, you know. Uh, call, uh, call, called me. Many called me before. I always try to decline. I would read the script when they send me, you know, always a piece of shit or something, you know. Like, just, I, and that is not only, you know, they made it Polish, sound Polish, not only Polish, Americans, believe me, English and French, 
every day there's a letter from somebody. Mr. Polanski, I admire and films and says I'm a young uh, charming director, etc. I was in the same position once. I, I went through terrible times before I broke somehow. So, so I feel somehow uh, responsible and very often I help these people. And maybe I shouldn't. But if I didn't, I wouldn't have this old marvelous friends around me that I have now that help me. When did you first meet Sebring, uh, Roman? First time. You mean the first time? Very first. There was a, I was already with Sharon in London for several months. Was she working on a film or it was, uh, it was just a, an acquaintance at that time? You want to tell me first how I met Sharon or what? Go ahead. First time I met Sharon four years ago at uh, some kind of party. Marty Ross, a terrible Hollywood producer who had her under contract and for whom I was doing the film. What was his name? Ron Sahal. No, it has nothing to do with it. It's uh, the most amazing name. A creep. Very The guy who makes Beverly Hills do this and all kind of shit, you know. Mm -hmm. But he seduced me with his, you know, sort of uh, uh, artist-like art, uh, attitude, etc. And I signed contact with him to do the film a spoof on the vampires, you know, called Vampire Killers. And I met Sharon at the party. She was doing another film for him in London at that time. Staying in London alone. She was Jerry's girlfriend. I said, uh, uh, I heard about it a couple of times. They mentioned uh, Rasa Hoff's uh, second man said, wait until you see our leading lady. So what's her name? Shante. Strange to some. Uh, it's a sound strangely. What happened like all the times? Sounded strangely. And once I met her, I thought she was quite pretty, but uh, I wasn't at that time very impressed. But then I met her again, I don't remember exactly. Well, see, because I tried to take her out. I took her out. We talked a lot, you know. I saw this girl rather, you know, difficult to make. At that time, I was really swinging on this. I think I was interested in the fact that girls and in this thing. Move, move on. Move on. No, I went to very bad marriage, you know, years before. I mean, not bad, it was beautiful, but, but my wife uh, dumped me, you know, left me, and then I had another girlfriend, she left me. So I was really feeling great because I had success with women, and I just liked fucking around. I was a swinger, huh? So, uh, uh, I met her a couple of more times. I knew that she was with Jay. And then they wanted me to use her in the film. And I made tests with her. So once before I wanted to take her out and she was sort of doing it a, a difficult, and sort of wanted to go out and didn't want to go out. I said, listen, fuck you. And I hung up. Probably that's the beginning of everything, you know? Somehow that's... Your sweet daughter. Right. <laughs> you know, somehow she got intrigued by me. And I really played it cool. And it took me a long day to know before. And, and then I started seeing that the girl, you know, sort of likes me. And, and uh, then I, I remember I spent night once. I lost the key and I spent night and her house in the same bed, you know. And I knew there's no even question of making love with her. That's how, that's the type of girl she was. I mean, it really happens to me. <laughs> and uh, long after, uh, we went out, well, uh, after that, after the, I think it was after this test, she woke up, the, went out with me and I just sat playing with her. I want to stay with me or not? And she stayed with me. And uh, that was the first time we made love. After maybe two months or three months. And uh, then uh, we went to the, to the location, you know. And again on location, 
was not like two or three months later. Jenny by that time came, I think, once or twice, but didn't come after she made love. It was this type of woman, if she didn't, it was, this is it, you know. I feel badly I heard about Jay, but I didn't know. When we went on location to the film, once again I asked her, do you want to, would you like to make love with me? And she said very sweetly, she says yes. And it was, and then it was for the first time that I was somehow touched by her, you know. And we started uh, sleeping regularly together. And she was so sweet and so uh, lovely that I didn't believe it, you know, it's because I had a bad experience with him. I didn't believe that people like that existed. And I was waiting a long time for her to show the color, right? I thought, when she was little, oh, beautiful, that's how she was. I thought it was uh, phoniness, you know, which it wasn't. She was just you know, fantastic. She was a fucking angel, I'm telling you. She was a, a unique character which I never meet again in my life, I know that. And when we were already set together, and it was it, and, and I was still living in a different house. I didn't want her to come to my house, and she was saying, listen, I won't swallow you, I want to be with you, etc. And I said, you know, I hardly live, I, am, I screw around, and she said, I don't want to change you. She was, I mean, she was ready to everything, just to be with me. And uh, one day, Jay came to see his friends. They already broke up and she told him, etc. And we're sitting in a restaurant in, in, in London called Alvaro. And uh, Jay was sitting at a different table with friends, common friends of mine and Sharon and hers, and good friends of his. Vivian Ventura, a young actress, and her husband, Frank Duncan. And so the, Sharon waved to him, and he waved, etc. And then Frank came and said that Jay would like to meet me. If I don't know Jay, I said, of course, I felt very, you know, sort of <laughs> uneasy. And Jay came and said that to him, and shook my hand, and kissed Sharon, shook my hand. I just wanted to meet you. I like you for your own. Mm. So this is my fucking profession. That's the first time you've been here. Did she ever go back to her? Let, 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 let me tell you how it was. Alright, I dig you, man. I dig you. It was not dramatic, it was very relaxed. I wonder how you are, I mean, I think, I think, I, I like you. I think you'll be very happy. And when? That was the first meeting with Jay, right? Afterwards, <coughs> I met him on several occasions, and I rather avoided it. It was rather, you know, uh, a little bit embarrassing. I felt guilty, so. But this, when I came to Los Angeles and started living here for two years, maybe felt, I saw him more and more often, he used to come to our parties, etc. And I, I, think I started liking a guy very, very much. He was a very sweet person, you know. Although I know about these hang-ups and, you know, he liked to uh, whip to the uh, tired girl. Sharon told me about it and he tied her once to the bed. She asked her, you know, I don't know if funny if I tied you to bed. And she, she was talking about it with fun, making fun of him, that he was rather, uh, rather disarming in the way he was doing it, right? And, uh, uh, I started meeting you. He, he, he was more and more often a guest of, uh, of, our, of ours. He was just hanging around, hanging around. And uh, sometimes Sharon would resent his staying too long because he was like always last to leave, you know? I don't think that. I, I'm sure that in the beginning of, uh, of, of this relationship there was still love for Sharon, etc. But I think that gradually. It uh, disappeared, 
you know, I'm quite sure of it. And you know, in my mind, when I learned about this, in, about the, the tragedy and description, I said, maybe change some. I mean, Fakir was pregnant, brought back in his mind some. You know, uh, you know, I would say that now it's really the end of everything. But I'm, I, I'm quite positive, you know, that there was nothing, no any from his part, not from Sean's part, because Sean was so much in love with me, as much as you human being can be, you know, to the last moment. So no indication on your part that uh, uh, Sharon went back to see him at any time? After mm -hmm. you were together, after you... Oh, there's no, 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 of course. No chance. No chance. No, sometimes I was thinking of it, you know, I was like, I am remained this is so suspicious, although I am very... I'm the bad one. Mm -hmm. I always screw around. I never, uh, you know, that was Sharon's big hang up, you know, because uh, we had endless discussions. And I said, You told me that you don't want to change me, etc. Mm -hmm. But uh, Sharon, Sharon was absolutely not interested in you. Was she interested in any other man? No. Because there was not a chance of for any man or for getting close to Shah. told me about this thing that she bought these two, you know, sooner because she could put her stuff. I was on, on the phone like every two days, you know, and then the only uh, thing was when I would come, when I would come, when I would come, you know. You see, we had a dog like that. That's not the dog that Wojtek ran over. No, this is the dog that I bought. When I ran, that he ran over the dog. A friend of mine, Victor Lau, said, buy another dog. First, buy another dog. So I, I said, Sharon, we well, wanted to have a, uh, to make them, so let's buy another Yorkie we'll make it. So we bought another Yorkie in London, this one. And then I said that Wojtek told me that the our dog ran away. I, I saw her run away. And then she said, could you call her dog come back? And slowly she became to, uh, accustomed to the idea that the other dog is gone. You understand? Mm. This was a replacement dog. How long ago was that when Wojtek hit uh, the dog? You know? Yeah, I can tell you. Uh, this dog... Let me see. About a month, I would say around five, five weeks before Sharon, five weeks before Sharon 
left England because we had died in love for about three weeks. It was means it happened months ago. Neither one of three one. months from now. Oh, neither one of you were there at the time. No. Uh, no, no, you wrote me a dramatic letter, which you know there was first was like after Comera's death, you know, after the, the, this composer death. It was the second really blow on me because I, I loved the dog and this dog meant two, two years of our marriage, of our life. It's almost like a baby, you know, I feel like shit. And I read this letter and he says, the terrible thing happened today. I killed Saperstein, what's his name? Saperstein. From, from the film, you know, one of my characters. I ran over Saperstein. Uh, I uh, uh, heard a squeak under the wheels uh, and he ran into the bushes. I ran after, found him, took to the vet, but it was too late. Uh, in the, f in the uh, um, uh, absurd way, I was dreaming of uh, reversing roles, of, of reversing roles. Only thing I got from you was uh, goodness and hell, and what I did was the killing. Uh, and it was a really very dramatic letter, and and I didn't answer, didn't telephone back, I didn't know what to do. I was there was mixed feeling. I could tell him get hell out of the house or something. I cried. I didn't know what to tell Sharon. It took me days, you know. And then I called his friend and telling him, Victor now that you had no problem with him. And Victor said, die and not die. He said, when I was a kid, it happened twice to me when my parents did first, die and not die. So the Sharon, first I told Sharon, you know, Sam is going to run away. First I think I told him. I said, no, no, first I, I can't remember the sequence now. I bought another dog and I went. Okay, I'm going to have to get on your way. I'll uh, give you a... Uh, might as well start. I'll tell you how this works, uh, Roman. Number one, it, uh, I put this around your chest. That measures your breathing. That's the so-called nomograph. This goes on your...